but now we've got Nick. And Nick is going to be talking about African ayahuasca and the tree of life, the search for DMT. Thanks, Nick. Good morning, everybody. Uh, Nick, uh, based researcher based at the University of Johannesburg in the group by Ben Eric van Veik. Um, our group is particularly interested in, in chemo systematics and, and chemo sort of taxonomy, or the new word is actually uh, chemo phonetics. And we're also very interested in African legumes. And uh, so a serendipitous outcome of the, 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 the search we've done within the ex um, acacia, African ex acacia, which has been broken into two different genera, Senegalia and Bacellia. During that search, we've made a serendipitous observation that has enabled us to comment on rumors about those species being used as ingredients in a traditional Egyptian or African ayahuasca, which uh, has been called Afriawaska. And it, in order for us to actually comment on um, whether or not it's possible in Africa, we, we need to, to find a comparison to the South American uh, ayahuasca, which um, as was sort of explained by David, uh, the, there's two sort of very important biological components to an ayahuasca uh, drink. And the, the first is the psychoactive component, dimethyltryptamine, which um, uh, I guess, uh, again, from David, we, we learned that Psychotria viridis is not the only species that is the source of DMT, but uh, within the Amazon, it, it, Psychotria viridis is commonly used. Outside of the Amazon, people have started using Mimosa tenuiflora, which is, is in Brazil, and it's also uh, in, in, some, in some parts of Mexico and Colombia and, and Central America, and this is what it looks like. It looks morphologically sim similar to a Vichelia or sim similar to a, a Senegalia in, in Africa, uh, probably the closest relative that we have with the DMT content. Uh, the thing about DMT is that if you drink it, you actually nothing will happen. It'll go sort of, it'll immediately be eliminated by, by your liver. And the reason that is, is because there's an enzyme in there called monoamine oxidase, monoamine oxidase A. So um, if you want to use DNT on its own, you actually smoke it. And if you get about 20 milligrams into your lungs, you'll have a, a journey or an experience that lasts for about 10 to 15 minutes. And then it's over. So it's a very short experience, but in ayahuasca, Another ingredient, which is Benisteriopsis, and we all, again, we learned from, from David that it's not only carpi, it, there's several other species in Benisteriopsis that are a source of harmala alkaloids. Those alkaloids um, inhibit those enzymes that remove DMT from your body. And as a consequence, you can have a journey that lasts from, from one hour to four hours. And again, as we learned from David, three days, if you're a, an apprentice. Um, this is a Benisteriopsis carpi that I found growing in a garden in Johannesburg. It's not indigenous to Africa. It's from, from the Americas. Uh, very important to point that out because, I mean, what is the claim? The claim uh, currently in, in South Africa and the rising entheogenic circles is that they, they are providing participants with an African ayahuasca experience. And of course, we, we have the, the tools and the know-how to explore this and to, to ver verify or not. And this is not an advertisement. This is a, just an example of some of the pamphlets they're hang, handing out. And this is also my cue to or, or sort of acknowledge that it's not a traditional practice. It's not traditional people who are doing this. It's actually um, mostly Dutch people. So it's, it's, it's not traditionally South African. Uh, but th they do claim that the, the knowledge they're using is, is being handed down to them or they've learned it or interpreted it from traditional Egyptian practice. They also talk about the Egyptian tree of life and how in the, in the Christian Bible, when Moses was uh, talking to the, the burning bush, he was in fact standing near uh, a species that was on fire and, and creating a, a DMT rich smoke. Um, one example of when you can talk to a plant and it talks back. Uh, however, I have to also acknowledge another interpretation of the burning bush is this species from, from Rutaceae, it's uh, so rich in essential oils that on a hot day, its headspace can, can actually be ignited. You can set it on fire, effectively creating a burning bush, tangential from this topic. So I'll just move on. Um, 
So the the uh, sort of the, the one of the claims is that eventually a tortillus was was a source of DMT, and and we we doubt that because this, the only study that reported DMT used a dubious method. This is TLC, and the if you if you've done TLC, you you'll know that the RF value there is too high for that to be actually diagnostic. So that we um, unfortunately debunked that study. Um, and and of course it's not it's not evidence of absence rather we just need to repeat it just to, to see is there a dmt in vichelia tortillus it's not been proven others claim it's vichelia neurotica subspecies neurotica um if you look at this petroglyph from uh, ancient egyptian times uh that's the egyptian tree of life uh unfortunately the intricacies of a compound leaf are not easily uh carved into rock and so you wouldn't expect that to be sort of an accurate depiction of the species that they were calling the Egyptian tree of life. Uh, nevertheless, it is a compound leaf-like structure, so some people have actually sort of, they've said it's, it's got to be like an, an African exocation, Vichelia or Senegalia. Uh, I still, I, we're, we're still doubtful. Uh, I'll explain later. But uh, what we can verify is that the Egyptians did have access to a source of the beta carboline alkaloids, the Hamala alkaloids, namesake Paganum Hamala. The, the Hamala alkaloids were actually first described in Paganum Hamala, and they, that's distributed in Egypt, so, so voila, possible. Um, however, uh, last year I did a systematic review of all the evidence of DMT being in, in, in African species, and what I found out was that none of the studies were reliable. Uh, I debunked all of them, unfortunately, and Hence, we've started on a journey of, of trying to understand or, or repeat some of that work and, and produce our own results. Uh, and more, more sad news, I, I went and interrogated these, these um, Ayahuascarians, and after a bit of interrogation, uh, they finally surrendered the truth. They're using uh, Mimosa tinui flora as their source of DMT, which is a South American species, it's not African. And uh, they're using Benisteriopsis carpi in, prefer in preference to Paganum hamala because they believe that Paganum hamala makes them feel sick. So, uh, however, nevertheless, they still claim, oh, it's possible we can just use local species. I can just pick this tree over here and use it instead of mimosa. I'd, I'd like to know why they're not actually doing that, to be honest. Why go to the trouble to, to bring it in from another continent? There is one thing that makes it African, uh, the blue lotus. They it creates a, a, a blue or purple colored ayahuascan drink, and uh, the blue lotus is an indigenous African species. It's got psycho psychotropic alkaloids in it. In Zulu mythology, it's used as a, a symbol of hope. Uh, a rough translation would be from the darkest muds grow the most beautiful flower. But it, this might also be a doctrine of signatures because uh, we have no evidence of this. But what if it was used as an antidepressant and hope just means you know feeling better. Nevertheless, this is the, the group that we're focused on, Senegalia versus Vichelia. They're easily to, to distinguish in the field. Um, the Senegalias have hooked thorns, and the, the way I remember it is if it's hooked over, it's an S, Senegalia. Uh, otherwise, it would be spines, and they often occur in a, a, a V-shape, so Vichelia. So it's quite easy to distinguish between the two in the field, and we are interested, originally interested uh, from a chemical perspective, can we find chemical markers just to, to sort of break the two genera up? And this is a, one of the, the first species that I looked at, Vichelia nolotica. The one that they say has DMT in it um, does not. Uh, we, don't, we haven't actually identified this comment. This is a HPLC profile. Does not contain DMT, contains something else, haven't worked out what it is yet. Uh, went to Senegalia Cafra. Tryptamine, but not di dimethyltryptamine. Tryptamine is not psychoactive. It, it's missing two methyl groups on the, the amine group there, so won't do anything. Uh, the bark had hortanine. Vichelia caru has something in there that looks a little bit like a beta carboline. Interesting, that's a whole can of worms right there. Uh, maybe maybe there's another source of beta carbolines out there. So Nigalia ataxacantha in the flowers and the leaves, DMT. So yes, verified. In fact, just in one specimen, this specimen, we sampled about seven from the species, and just this one had the DMT, and you know went back, resampled, and resampled again, and verified that yes, one tree has DMT in it. The result. This is sort of some preliminary results, and and what we've realised is that the Vichelias have no tryptamines. Uh, 
So those claims, well, Vichelia dysportillus, Vichelia no tryptamines, uh, very uninteresting in terms of amines and alkaloids. Senegalias, however, they seem to be giving us a really boastful sort of display of DMT, tryptamine, so forth. Uh, so, you know, next question, is it possible to use Senegalia or Taxicanthra in Afriawaska? Possible, but not probable. And the reason being is because the concentration of DMT was a bit low, a bit too low. Uh, you would have to use about 15 kilograms of leaves or flowers, uh, repeated straining of leaves and, and re-extraction and concentration. Um, and, and we also don't have any knowledge of, of the toxicity of it as well. Is it safe? Next question. Um, but just, just some, some remarks, proof that Afriawaska is possible, not proof that it was practiced. Um, the emphasis really should be shifted from Vichelia to Senegalia, in my opinion. Uh, but also, uh, I'd also like to acknowledge that um, we the, the study was in South Africa, Southern Africa. We were focused on South African genotypes. We, we really, I mean, if you want to talk about an Egyptian um, ayahuasca, you have to go to Egypt and sample the local plants because the chemistry can vary from one side of the continent to another. And also, I'd like to disclose that Senegalia taxicanthus is not even in Egypt. So, um, we really have to, you know, continue our, our search for a species in Egypt that, that might have a similar profile and, and hopefully more DMT than just 0.03%. Uh, so in conclusion, more work needed um, in keeping in line with the, the theme of this conference, rumors circulated as a result of not asking the plants. And we spoke to the plants, the medium was HPLC and NMR, and the plants spoke back to us and said the rumors are probably bogus. Thank you.